Um, so I will start by saying that OFIP is the name of the system we submitted to ImageX, but it's also the name of the official feature extractor that we released. Um, which is, uh, so this feature tracker is really meant to be a black box for vision people who want to train their own uh, data. Um, so we are the only team to enter all three tasks for vision, uh, classification, localization, and detection. And one of the points of this work is uh, it's a nice example of transfer learning, where we started uh, features done from classification and we actually managed to learn state of the art. Uh, Regress on these features to actually predict uh, coordinates of our boxes. So these are the results um, for classification. Uh, top results are uh, from uh, Matt uh, Minden, who is here, uh, Andrew Howard, who is around here. And so obviously, uh, the black box is free competitive uh, and it's based on the model by uh, Alex. Um, and it's pretty similar. I mean, uh, one of the main differences is just scaling up. Uh, so we have more features, more layers, a small stripe for the first formation. Uh, and we went up to 1.5 million parameters with uh, 5 million connections. Um, and another improvement we did is a uh, dense multi-scale coding. Instead of uh, Alex's 10-view uh, 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 multi-view. And this is a more uh, principled way of doing uh, multi-view. And uh, I explained later that you know, to connect, you can actually do that. It's, uh, it's pretty efficient. Um, so in the past six months, there's been a tremendous amount of work uh, again, still here of the art using Um And I put this slide together because this group from Stockholm, they used the word uh, assembly to describe the context. Uh, so I have three slides of results over the past six months. Uh, so what they did here, they took the old bit black box and they put it here on top. And they kept it pretty simple uh, on purpose, uh, just to see how it would do on other tasks. So, this, uh, so they did you know, scene recognition, fine grain recognition, video detection, image visual, and they got uh, competitive or stereo results. Uh, and it was really surprising to them. And uh, I guess you know, the lesson is that features are really not that uh, in the past. Um, so, good work by uh, the ambassador, a lot of people, uh, Luria. Uh, and two weeks ago, this guy uh, won the Kaggle Galaxy uh, Challenge. So, he had to you know, classify Galaxy. <coughs> and he was a new point as well. Um, so, I also won my uh, own uh, Kaggle Challenge. It was the dogs and cats you have to classify, which is a very good test using OLP. And what's interesting is that the, the top performers, they, they, uh, most of them use OLP for a combination of OLP and the gap. Um, and more interestingly, the, the second best results, uh, this guy, he said he just took 15 minutes of coding to interface with OLP and 20 bucks on Amazon, and voila, you have the second best results. Um, so bottom line is, uh, to quote these guys from Stockholm, uh, it, can, it can be concluded that from now on, deep learning with the components has to be considered to primary them in such a and individual way. Alright, now that uh, localization and detection. Uh, so first of all, what is localization? Um, so it's essentially a part of the classification, classification task because we have, in addition to finding the right class, uh, you have to give a type of inbox around the object. Um, but you, you also uh, pretty much guarantee to have, you have at least one object, and it's going to be a pretty big image. Uh, so it's not as far as detection, uh, where you can have any number of objects, and they can be any size, uh, like this the tiny remote control here, it's pretty much fine. Um, and you, you won't be penalized for uh, false start. Uh, so the results for localization, we, we won the localization with 30% error. Uh, and detection, we didn't win during the challenge, but two weeks later we got still the only 4.3% mean average precision. 
Um, and the UVA and NC uh, teams had a slightly different approach, which I'll explain later. Um, I just want to make the point that cornets are good for detection because um, they're basically uh, promotional all the way, uh, including the frequent control, which you can see as one by one conversions. And uh, which means that you can have any uh, input size of your images, uh, and you don't need, you can share the results, the, the intermediate layers, and you don't need to recompute everything. So, for example, this uh, tiny network here, if you were to add some extra um, pixels, you, you would only have to recompute the you know, area if you only did that part. So, you know, this is why it, uh, it's okay to do this on this because it's uh, designed for that. Um, that detection, the way uh, traditional object detection goes, uh, you do a sliding window, uh, then uh, no maximum suppression, so you only keep one, uh, the strongest uh, activation, and offline bootstrapping. So offline bootstrapping means um, you're going to do a pass over your, over your images and you find the worst answers, uh, and then you're going to retrain on that uh, later. Uh, so some of the problems with this is that you get um, fixed aspect ratio windows. So like you know, these squares here. So this is a multi-scale uh, dense uh, content. And um, and this approach is also very sensitive to both parameters. Um, and often this stuff is very complicated. Uh, and if you use non complex uh, models, then you're going to have to recompute your own model uh, every location. Um, so to help get some of these problems, uh, recent um, work uh, has been doing this you know, object uh, measure, where it's kind of using this whole idea where you uh, do a, a quick and uh, cheap uh, generic detection first. You find uh, interesting candidates, and then you run your more uh, intense model on, the, on these few candidates. Um, so you can do it with segmentation of comments. Uh, and this speeds things up. Uh, it reduces the number of positive by a lot. And, uh, and so this, this was the approach by uh, UVA, the second best uh, um, What we did is, instead, um, so this is, uh, <coughs> I started doing a bounding box prediction of these comments for the distribution detection. And the idea was more, was less about uh, speeding things up, was more about uh, increasing the evidence um, for objects. So when you slide a uh, comment, uh, if, if for each uh, window that you slide, you, you produce uh, a bounding box and you can accumulate these bounding boxes and be really sure of what the answer is. Um, and, and predicting um, bounding boxes is, is really similar to the, to the work that we have did in 2004, where they were um, trying to regress to this uh, face manifold, uh, and this manifold is trying to predict the presence and the pose of faces in the images. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much the same. Um, and yeah, by the way, these, these people are Jens and sisters. Um, yeah. It's my grandmother. Grandmother. Um, so, so the way our pipeline works, um, this is a multi-scale um, cognate sliding window. And each of these boxes are one from the and so we, we have this um, feature extraction phase, which is common for both um, classification and organization. So this, this, all the features are shared. And then you have two different uh, outputs. So you have an output for uh, classification. So for each of these box, you're going to say, is it a bear or is it a whale? So, so, uh, so yellow is bear and uh, pink is whale. Um, and then the second output is going to predict, or this window is going to predict uh, body box. And that's, that's what you get. Um, so now the next thing is, uh, you know, if all the body box are all aligned, then you're pretty sure that uh, this should be the right body box. And if they all have the same color, then you're pretty sure it's the right class. Um, and if, it, if it gets you know, all uh, messy, then uh, maybe they don't agree, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more like a false positive. So this is a really good way to separate uh, true positive and false positives. Um, 
this is yeah, one form of voting for the patient frequencies. Um, and this shows so the better it, it's aligned, the, the more sure we are. And in this example, it shows that you know, it still works for when you have multiple objects, you're in, you're in, when you're in between and you start your window. Um, the boxes are going to you know, distribute themselves naturally on each object in society. Uh, so it does work for uh, you know, uh, multiple objects. Um, and then you, after what you have, you have all these windows, you can merge them based on their confidence, based on how well they align, uh, different measures. And, and you end up, in that case, you end up with this one uh, really confidence uh, box that this is a bear at this location. Um, so one thing I want to mention is that when you do a uh, comments, you, if you have lots of something, you might end up with a big gap between the nodes, and this is not a detection. So what you want to do is uh, increase, uh, decrease the size of the, the stripe. Uh, and there's a trick for that. Uh, that, that system can be better. Uh, so for bootstrapping, so we don't do this uh, offline bootstrapping because uh, it's uh, when this is a big, it's just free company. Um, and doing online is better because you adapt constantly. It doesn't require any, any storage. Um, uh, so you could, you know, for you could say for that image, I'm going to uh, backdrop all these uh, boxes. Um, but you might not want to do that because uh, that might buy some gradients too much for each image. So instead, what maybe you should do is uh, backdrop again the, the worst false positive in that image, the worst false negative. And one random negative and one random positive. Um, okay, some examples of detection. So, so sometimes we get duplicates, it's not a uh, perfect hit. Um, the cores, guitar, so it can work with the, you know, some uh, annotation uh, changes, monkeys, uh, table. Um, okay, this one's pretty uh, interesting, I think, because we barely see the instruments. And yet we are able to dig the right class and the right uh, type of um, This one is also good because um, uh, there's a quite a bit of overlap between the two birds, and yet we use two different uh, outputs. So the right is a ground code and left is our application. Um, so it does work well with uh, overlap. Uh, same here we have some overlap between the stars. Um, and the nice thing is that most of the time the failures uh, make a lot of sense. So this the graph is snake, and we say horse group, but it does you know, look a lot like it. Um, and we say remote control for the fridge, and it kind of looks like remote control. Um, but we, yeah, we don't find this real uh, lower bounds. Uh, and tables are not so easy to find. Um, so even that is pretty hard. Uh, this, uh, lots of labels on some uh, pictures, um, like there's a mic here, a uh, person, a drug, and yeah, in this case, we only find a person. So this is pretty uh, interesting uh, data set. Uh, for example, yeah, say for the first time, it's pretty hard to um, find all these strawberries. We found like three bananas and uh, one hot dog and one tennis ball. So uh, there's still some way to go. Uh, so to recap, the deep nets has become a new baseline for vision. And uh, I think we're not just going to be looking first to be uh, Just by you know, swapping in the deep nets and uh, reducing all the methods. Um, I think if we keep scaling up, uh, both in terms of models and data, we can uh, keep seeing uh, improvements. Um, so we show that we can uh, do nice transfer learning, you know, learn uh, different tasks, you know, localization, from uh, features uh, trained for classification. Um, we should have convex a good for detection. Uh, accumulating uh, prediction is uh, increasing increasing robustness, uh, increasing the false positive and gets us best results. Um, and doing dense finding windows is important to get good results. So which is why I think the next step might be learning attention. Uh, because if we get if we know exactly what to look, then we can really focus on uh, and uh, doing prediction on exactly the right uh, boxes. And that will uh, not only increase the uh, speed, but also increase the matches. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Can you predict the window size at each
which location we are? Uh, it's four coordinates, so yeah, we look at the center and then the uh, scale and that's the pressure. Oh, so it's not necessarily centered on the pixel that corresponds to the output uh, Yeah, I mean, you, there's different things you can do and they all can work. So you do the X, Y, and I can do it. So you mentioned uh, the next step is the attention. I think that's a great idea. Uh, but the, from your results, it also seems like you could benefit from treating it like that structured up for different tasks, where you take advantage of the context of perhaps the other objects that are detected. Yes, yeah, yeah. The detection of it, every object. Yeah, is that's that another direction. Yes, that's something we want to do. We didn't have time to do. Uh, obviously, um, uh, sometimes you know, um, like the tennis ball. And, yeah, a tennis ball, like we should be able to say, you know, this, this shouldn't be a tennis ball in the future. So, yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's more, it's an area of research, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, I didn't understand when you talked about using the positives and negatives for backdrop. Uh, right. Don't, what, why not using all the positives? Uh, well, in the ground too. Positives in the ground too. Uh, no, I mean, bootstrapping is more about exploring your own mistakes. So you infer uh, an image, you look at the answers, and... Uh, oh, the false positives. False positive, yeah. Okay. Uh, but also you still want to train on the true positives. And, uh, but, but in that case, the false negatives should all be there. Um, <coughs> there was... Well, there's sometimes in that... Uh, right, yeah. If there was a window, you should... Yeah, if all the right. true positives are there, the false negatives are there. Right. But the point I wanted to make is it's not good to train on the easy ones too much. And you want to have good bands, and you want to find make bands. Uh, yeah, if there's not other questions, uh, let's thank you again.